Season up, Chargers. I'm Mr. Jake Hafner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. This is your first time tuning in the show. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. And if you are tuning in on ESPN Radio, thank you guys so much for joining the show. Dan and I have a topic that seemingly we have touched on a few times already over the past several months. Discussed it with Chargers fans. The discourse obviously has been out there. And especially after the pro day of one Malik Neighbors yesterday, Dan and I kind of wanted to tackle the question again, but from a different perspective, because everything has been out there as it relates to Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. Who's better? Who should the Chargers take? Every which way you could dissect it. Dan and I wanted to tackle it from the standpoint of overall fit. Who would be the better fit as it relates to this new organization, this new head coach with Jim Harbaugh. How is he going to run his offense? And the good thing about it is there's a lot of reasons to say yes to both of these guys, (laughs) especially given the Chargers' current wide receiver situation. So Dan and I are going to try to tackle this as best as we can, break it all down, give our opinions and thoughts on the matter. Uh, First and foremost, Dan, how are you, sir? I'm great. I'm great. And this topic has me excited and I think has a lot of Chargers fans excited, especially with the news of the possibility of four quarterbacks going prior to the Chargers selecting at number five. It's getting hot. And if that's the case, the Chargers get their pick of the best player in the NFL draft, not named a quarterback. <laughs> that's what has people excited. And has us excited at the possibility. Now, there are so many different avenues this team could take. They could trade down. They can go tackle. They could trade up. Who knows? But if the discussion is which receiver is best for the Chargers, there's a lot of it depends in that scenario and in that question, that line of thought. And that's where we are going to get into today. Because... Jake, you and I, we've talked about, and we've heard it. You mentioned it. Like, how often have we seen people try to argue who is the better player? Who is the better prospect? And in my opinion, that's kind of a moot question. And I don't think there's really an answer. I would say there's no wrong answer to that question. But what I do think that there is, and we'll kind of get to this, is I do think there is more of a discussion around which of these two insanely talented prospects, bona fide superstar talent prospects, are best suited to fill the gap that the Chargers currently have at wide receiver. And there's a lot of variables to that. There's a new coaching staff. There's a new front office. There's new gaping holes at the wide receiver room right now with no Keen Allen and Mike Williams. There's other needs for this team that are in play. So that's the discussion that we're going to have. It's not who's better. It's who's the better fit. So to kick it off, Jake, I think it's important and I'll kind of bring this to you, but let's separate these two receivers here for a second in terms of like what fans or teams would be getting with these two players. I'll let you go first. Jake, who is Marvin Harrison Jr. and what are teams getting with this beast of a prospect? Just an unbelievable dynamic playmaker of a wide receiver, Dan. Uh, In terms of just what he brings to the table, what he does to defenders the double teams that he commands when he is out there to me i know that this is kind of me feeling like i'm burying the narrative here but in terms of who i would favor between both of these wide receivers for marvin harrison jr and malik neighbors to me it has been marvin harrison jr especially now from the standpoint that keenan allen is no longer with this team i think from what Jim Harbaugh is going to try to imply with uh, implement with this offense, Marvin Harrison just fits that bill right off the bat. In terms of how he can be utilized, you can use him downfield, you can use him in the slot, you can use him in, in cross routes, however it is that you want to dial it up for Marvin Harrison, he can do it all. And in the circumstance of, especially just think about this from the standpoint of Jim Harbaugh's perspective, 
and even Jesse Minter alluded to this a couple of weeks ago when they were lauding over what Marvin Harrison is as a receiver, what he does, and how much attention that they needed to pay to pay to him. If you were in a position like that, wouldn't you rather be on the one on the end of having a weapon like that as opposed to a coach having to go against a weapon like that? I mean, it's just off the charts for what Marvin Harrison brings to the table in terms of intangibles goes. So I think that's where the broader scope of his skill set as a receiver, the amount of ways that he can help a quarterback in an offense, and especially as it relates to what the Chargers currently have, Marvin Harrison would just be the ultimate, ultimate dynamic weapon. I have, you know me, Dan, I have been the advocate of the trade down for 10 years. If Marvin Harrison Jr. was still there on the board at five, are you throwing in the trash? I'm He's throwing it in the trash. It is the one exception to the rule where I would say, don't do it. <laughs> It's just stick and pick. Don't think about it. You just got Justin Herbert, an elite playmaking wide receiver. You're not wrong in any of that. And a lot of this kind of comes down to like what is going to be designed by this new staff. But looking at these two players, and I'll start with Marvin Harrison just to kind of put a bow on it. Generational. Generational wide receiver prospect that in my opinion is as close to a sure bet perennial pro bowl prospect as you can find the kids refined he's physical he's athletic he's reliable draws double teams and still wins contested catch savant yes the guy is just a stud no ifs ands or buts about it and seen malik neighbors is a different type of generational elite wide receiver prospect. Malik Neighbors is one, Jake, that has been the archetype that I have wanted to pair with Justin Herbert since he was drafted. Elite speed. Just saw 4-3-4 at his pro day. Dynamic playmaking. Yards after catch machine. The home run hitter that this team has not had, period, since Justin Herbert has been the quarterback. He provides kind of that easy six that I always think about, where you get him the ball in space, let him take it to the house. Both sound intriguing. To your point earlier, yes, I can care. Like, I'll take both. (laughs) I don't care which one. I'll be happy with either. But if the Chargers are on the clock and it's pick number five and they are not trading back, those are the rules here. And they're deciding between these receivers. It becomes what flavor do you want? What flavor does this coaching staff and Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman, how do they want to instill? What philosophy do they want to run? Based on who the current receiving room is, Because let's not forget, currently, and Jake, this is the alarming part, and this is why Chargers fans are like pounding the table for a wide receiver at five. The current wide receiver room, Jake, does not have a bona fide mismatch in the room. No. The current receiving squad has no proven possession wide receiver to fill the shoes of Keenan Allen. The current receiving core does not have a contested catch savant like Mike Williams. The current receiving core does not have a home run hitter, no elite playmaking ability or yards after the catch. Aside from, if you want to say, an unproven at best Quinton Johnston and a very undersized bottom of the wide receiver room, Darius Davis. So which receiver of these two do we, they, feel best fit the hole or holes that they find the most glaring. So I'll ask you that, Jake. Of all of the things that this wide receiving core now does not have or has not had, what do you feel this staff 
deems most important to either add to the wide receiver room or to have in the wide receiver room? I think in this circumstance, what you're looking for, and, and again, this is interesting because this whole wide receiver class is deep. So we know that the Chargers are going to select a wide receiver in this class. We just don't for sure know sure when. Hope so. <laughs> we just for sure don't know when. Uh, I'm not sure, Dan. And it's funny because if you if we were having this conversation a year ago, this would have been geared much more to Malik Neighbors. Not to say that you know, if if we were talking about both of these players in last year's drafts, that we wouldn't still be talking about this type of narrative. But as you've been saying, came come last year, we were always talking about well, who's the wide, who was the wide receiver with the most explosion, the downfield speed type that the Chargers needed in the old Brandon Staley regime and how that offense was going to be run. And not to say that explosion and speed is not valued, which Malik Neighbors brings to this offense or which he would bring to this offense. But Marvin Harrison Jr., I think, is just the complete package when you're looking for it. Big-bodied, 6'4", you had mentioned the contested catches, how you can utilize him. I think, again, when Jim Harbaugh puts that emphasis on bringing a little bit more balance to the offense, not to say that Justin Herbert's right arm is not going to be going downfield because we've obviously heard that is going to be a priority as well, but getting him a dynamic weapon, the likes of Marvin Harrison Jr., to me, that's what fits this mold of Jim Harbaugh's offense in this particular case. If we're talking about just best fits, that is where I would give him the edge. Now, there is definitely a case that for neighbors to be made in the same argument, which Dan and I, Dan will do here in just a second. But to me, again, and here comes the if. <laughs> if there are four quarterbacks selected before the Chargers make their pick, you even heard Jim Tarbaugh talking about it earlier this week in owners' meetings where he says, hey, if that's a hypothetical thing and his favorite you know, self-imposed best quarterback that he's ever seen, J.J. McCarthy goes, is part of that one, two, three, four. The Chargers are really the beginning of the draft at number five. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, how quick can you send the card up to the podium at that point in time if we're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. being Mm -hmm. on the board at number five? But... So the, but the, again, well, no. So I, I think this is where, and this has been a process for me as well, because I had said from the jump that Malik Neighbors was my guy. And I love the possibility of what Malik Neighbors could bring to Justin Herbert and this offense and excitement and explosive. Like I, all of that, it's a given. But I had said that's with Keenan Allen on the roster. When Keenan Allen walked out that door in that trade to Chicago, that changes things. Because as much as I love Malik Neighbors, I'm not necessarily sure if I'm comfortable with Malik Neighbors being that volume catcher right away, at least right away. While he is dynamic, explosive, fa- like all of the things. I'm not sure if he is going to be the X receiver taking up double teams on the outside from the jump. Like he will eat and feast and go crazy down the middle of the field, in the slot. He'll go wild. But he doesn't do everything. Marvin Harrison Jr. does. And so when Keenan Allen walks out that door and Mike Williams walks out that door, those characteristics that this wide receiver room doesn't have anymore, they get amplified. So we talk about bona fide mismatch. That's both of them, in my opinion. We talk about possession wide receiver. That goes Marvin Harrison Jr., in my opinion. Contested catch stud. I think that's also. Marvin Harrison Jr. Home run hitter. That goes Malik Neighbors. Elite playmaking ability. 
playmaking, I would say that's a wash. Yards after catch, neighbors. So what's more important? That's the question. And I think to get there, the last part of this is you got to focus on who's now running the show. You look at what Joe Hortiz has done in Baltimore and what he's drafted. You look at how Jim Harbaugh has run his offense everywhere he's been and the receivers he's had or not had in all the stops he's been at. You look at Greg Roman and the style of offense that he's had and the running game and the balance and the play action and all of that stuff that we've heard about. And then you, you think of like the, the, the variable of what is what are they going to build around Justin Herbert? Like there's some unknown there that we don't know what this new offense is going to look like. We just know what we've seen in the past. And so when you go look at the receivers they've had in the past, how many Malik Neighbors types have we seen in those clubhouses? Now, you can argue how many Marvin Harrison Juniors have you seen? Obviously none. But that archetype you've seen. Jake, what have we seen like historically, receiver-wise? And who does that align more with? You're talking about in terms of organizations. Yeah, for Jim Harbaugh or Joe Hortiz. And you could probably I mean, put Greg Roman under Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz, to be honest. I mean, if you keep it in the last time that Jim Harbaugh was in the National Football League, you go back to his time at San Francisco. This was at a time where his first year there, he had Michael Crabtree and Ted Ginn Jr. as his two starting wide receivers. Now, Crabtree stayed with the organization for the duration that Harbaugh was there, and he was their best receiver. At one point, prior to Jim Harbaugh leaving, they got they brought in Anquan Bolden, and during that point in time, he had a great season as well. So... It's really interesting to look at, again, the dynamic of those wide receivers. And to me, this is, once again, I think that this skews more in Marvin Harrison's factor when you look at Anquan and Michael Crabtree as the most productive wide receivers that he had during that period of time. Michigan, look at those two. I mean, Michigan, you had, you know, if you want to talk about recency bias, you look at Nico Collins. And you look at what he's obviously now turned into in Houston. But what we've always known about Jim Harbaugh is that he always kind of prioritized the tight ends and the running backs a little bit more than he did the wide receivers. However, when was the last time that Jim Harbaugh, Joe Hortiz, in any type of situation, were in a, situ- were in a position like this where you have the fifth overall pick and in arguably one of the best receiver classes that we have seen here over the past four to five years. And with the opportunity to get two blue chip players like Marvin Harrison and Malik neighbors. Now I get all the reasons again, and and Dan dropped this a minute ago. This is why people are so up in arms about this. You know, you hear Jim Harbaugh go off on his, three-minute uh, conversations about why the offensive line is so important and what that's going to look like. And you see mock draft after mock draft of all the pundits selecting the, you know, the Chargers taking Joe Alt at five or trading back to 11 and taking Fuaga. And everybody's just saying, oh, what the hell? <laughs> you know, what are you, what are you doing? To Dan's point, there's something here because they know that they are not going into the 2024 season with the wide receiver room that they have. And once again, it w- you would be so hard pressed to tell me now, again, if, if it's Marvin Harrison jr. To me, again, that's a no brainer decision. Even if it's a situation where Marvin Harrison jr. Is off the board and we're talking about five. And again, I'm the trade down advocate and there's a plenty of holes that the chargers need to fill on this roster. Can they do it? And is this a deep wide receiver class? Yes. But there's something that tells me (laughs) you're kind of going to be pigeonholed into making a big case to move off of either one of these players. Because before free agency started, there was never the intention of uh, originally of letting Keenan Allen walk out the door. Let's remember that. 
that ended up materializing through an unfortunate series of events. The other things that took place, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, all those we've known about and we've predicted that those were moves that were going to happen because of cap reasons. Keenan Allen was not. And now that he is not here, that changed the dynamics of this wide receiver room entirely. What type of role does Jim Harbaugh and company have at most? That's what this is going to come down to. And at the end of the day, in my opinion, and we'll get to our receiver rankings, best fits for the Chargers here in a bit, but Marvin Harrison Jr., again, we're talking to a world without Keenan Allen, without Mike Williams. Marvin Harrison Jr. seems like he would be the cake. He would be the most complete receiver addition to his team that fills the most holes that this room has. Whereas Malik Neighbors seems like he would be the icing, the sprinkles, the drizzle on the top that just sets it off. Malik Neighbors, I think, would probably need to bring in another receiver along with him later on. That brings in maybe some of that contested catch physicality standpoint on the X outside. Whereas Marvin Harrison Jr. feels like he checks off w- more boxes, in my opinion. But we'll see. So, for those on ESPN Radio, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can listen to the full episode uh, on YouTube. LAC underscore Unleashed on X. Jake, I think, like, the part that's always fascinating to me about this is they can't go wrong. No. And Chargers fans should be happy regardless. And it comes down to the philosophy and how they are going to attack completing this receiver room. And there are many ways to skin this, right? Like, you can go the Martin Harrison Jr. route. They're probably going to go to receivers either in the draft or free agency regardless. If it's Malik Neighbors, I love to have somebody alongside of him. Like, um, give me someone physical, right? Give me like a Xavier Leggett type. He'd be sick. Give me someone big body, somebody who can be on the outside, who can win those contested catches, who's reliable with their hands. If it's Marvin Harrison Jr., that's the selection. Man, give me sauce. I want sprinkles. I want flavor. I want pizzazz. I'm going crazy with speed, athleticism, yak in the inside. You can find a lot of those guys later on. when We've talked about some of them in terms of prospects. So which way do they go? If you were a betting man right now, Jake, if it was me, if it was me and my offense and what I want to do, the Keen, see, the Keen Allen thing changes it, dude. Keen Allen thing changes it. Your analogy right there of your little dessert concoction that you were making up, see, if it's me, give me 31 flavors in a cup. <laughs> and that's Marvin Harrison Jr. Just give me one scoop of everything and mix it up in a blender. You're the and person, not the or person. Yep, Correct. <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I think... And I think I'm landing there too. I think I'm landing there too in the current iteration of this Chargers receiving room and what this offense is looking to do. But, but, like if someone told me that I can go get uh, Malik Neighbors and follow him up with a Xavier Leggett, like, or or that type, (laughs) but that's, changing the math here if we're just looking at which of these two prospects is the best fit in isolation for the chargers while i love malik neighbors and the idea and the possibilities that he could bring to this team he seems like a cherry on top and this receiving room currently needs the base first (laughs) like they don't have a cake to put the cherry on they just have a cup right now they got a they got a cup (laughs) And the thing hasn't been put in the oven yet. It's just like a bunch of ingredients you don't know what to do with. I'm not sure how they taste. So, again, it's not about who's better. It's about who's the best fit. And for all we know, Malik Neighbors can go to a team that has the cake already set and can just go off. And I expect that he will. 
But Marvin Harrison Jr., like the floor for Marvin Harrison Jr., I believe is much higher than Malik Neighbors. The ceiling for Malik Neighbors is probably a tick above Marvin Harrison Jr. And this is like, again, a risk reward thing. And this Chargers team, like they got a hit on this stuff, dude. They just got rid of Michael and Zakeen now. They cannot mess this part up. Like, this is important. So, Jake, anything else on this topic? Short, sweet, one topic. Draft needs to be tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. That's going to do it. Interesting times. Exciting times. Fascinating events unfolding here for the Chargers. Will they have the first non-quarterback selection in the NFL draft? We'll find out. Will they trade down? Will they stick and pick? Will they go off the tackle when the whole place goes on fire? All of that upcoming. <laughs> but until then, you find Jake Heffer at Jake T. Heffer on X, myself at Dan W. Sports. Thank you to everyone tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe. We'll talk to you next time on the Chargers.